Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Bolt Axe Reloading. In this week's episode, we're going to cover a tool that pretty much every reloader needs on their reloading bench, the Hornady Overall Length and Bullet Comparator Set. Stick around. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here and you'd like to see how I and the rest of me here make our group smaller, start now by subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon. That way you get notified when I post next week's video and you won't miss anything. Well guys, in this week's video we'll be covering another tool that we use here on the channel an awful lot and actually it's more than one. I wanted to break it into a separate video but I didn't know how to properly demonstrate its effectiveness without actually utilizing these tools together. They pretty much go hand in hand. The primary topic is the bullet comparator set. We're going to be needing the overall length gauges to show some of its uses. This tool can be used for sorting bullets, helping you to get your bullet seating die set properly, or repeat a previous seating depth, as well as its most important function, in my opinion, is helping you locate the bullet's ogive relative to the rifling in your barrel. Personally, I prefer to call that the distance to your rifling for your specific projectile that you're loading. Before we get too deep, let's start off by going over this tool. It's probably better to be referred to as tools because they're commonly used together. In a previous video, we covered the Hornady Headspace Gauge, and part of this is very similar. The basic insert part of this tool is also utilized with the Hornady Headspace Gauge that we've went over in a previous video. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a card up if you'd like to check it out at the end of the video. Essentially, this kit has different inserts in there for depending on the caliber that you're reloading for and to be able to help you get some measurements that you'll need if you want to understand the most about your rifle and your reloads. This bullet comparator set actually comes in two different flavors, one that has six inserts and another that has 14. Both of these seem to come with a comparator body that you can use with the headspace inserts. As well, if you decide to only get the six insert set, you can order some of these individually. Another option, that, like same as we mentioned last week, there's also an anvil base kit that gives you a much wider base to use with your calipers, but you can certainly use it without it if that's what you decide to do. Neither of these tools is going to come with the calipers, and they don't have to be used with Hornady calipers, that's just what we're going to be demonstrating them with today. To be able to understand everything you would use this tool for, we really can't use it without the Hornady overall length gauge. There's going to be a couple more details we're going to mention along the way, but we're not going to go into too drastic a detail because we're going to try and keep this video as on topic as possible. The Hornady overall length gauges we're going to need actually come in two flavors as well. Both of them are on the table. There's going to be a straight one as well as a curved model. The straight is pretty much for your bolt action rifle, so you can take the bolt out of your rifle and use it in that function. Or if you have a semi-automatic, you can use the curved option. You could technically use the curved option in both. It's probably just a little bit more difficult to keep it straight, but that's up to you what tool you want to use and how you'll utilize it. Along with looking at these tools today, we're actually going to talk about a couple alternatives you could use to do some of these same things. But in the long run, I think depending on how many times you're going to do this, sometimes it's just easier to be able to pull out your tools real quick and get the measurements you need to move forward instead of having to repeat some of your efforts. So let's just start getting into a couple examples of what you're actually going to utilize these tools for. The technical name of our product is a bullet comparator, so that's going to be the first application that we talk about today. Being a bullet comparator, we have to find a bullet. These particular projectiles are .264, so the insert we're using is the 5-26. So this is slightly smaller than .264, and that's going to actually tell us the measurement from the, what we're generically going to call the ogive of the bullet to the base, and allow us to measure on any of our given rounds the actual dimension from the ogive to the base of the bullet. Without this particular tool, it would be very difficult to actually know the base to ogive of your projectile if that is important to you. The biggest application where I could see this might be important to you is actually sorting a lot of projectiles. If you're looking to get some of your flyers out of there, you might find that your projectiles that you're using have a variance from this measurement. Not going to tell you that it's something that's going to be valuable for you, but it is something to look at. If you're having problems with flyers out of one of your rifles, it's certainly something to check and it's very difficult to check if you don't have this tool. As you can see, this projectile measures 0.791 pulling out another 0 0.7905. So these two are very close to each other, but some lots that I've had, especially some, um, from lot to lot with some of my 220 Sierra Match Kings, I've actually seen some fairly significant differences of up to at least 10 thousandths from lot to lot of this measurement, which when we get into the, some of our further applications, we'll need to understand why that might be important. But essentially the first use that we're going to talk about today is taking this type of measurement, being able to know the ogive of the bullet to the base. Now eventually we're going to do this to the whole cartridge, but stick around, we'll get there. Now to show this particular application, we're going to actually have to do a little bit of measurement. So we're going to have, need the assistance of a couple other tools like I mentioned, namely our overall length gauge. This used to actually be called the stony point gauge, but I believe Hornady bought the rights to it. Now it's just called the Hornady overall length gauge. 
In conjunction with that, we're going to need what, what Hornady calls a modified case. Just like with a lot of things in reloading, there's more than one way of doing things. I personally just buy the modified cases because I think that we get measurements that are close enough. Certainly better than not having the tools at all. But there are ways, there are videos out there showing how to make your own modified case. All this particular case is, is a 6.5 Creedmoor case. Essentially had the neck expanded so, it will, so a, a bullet will slide in and out of it with very little resistance. However, hold it relatively straight. It's also been drilled and tapped to the proper size to fit on our gauge. We're simply going to screw our modified case on our overall length gauge. So now that we have our modified case on our overall length gauge, we've inserted our projectile. We're going to actually insert this in our rifle. Obviously, it's going to be empty. You'll see with this screw loosened, it allows the center to go up and actually push the bullet forward. And what that's going to allow us to do is actually find out where we get resistance in our lands, and then we're going to measure it. So very simply, we're going to put our bullet in there very short. I'm going to tighten the screw up. We're going to get our overall length gauge all the way in place. Make sure that this is seated as far forward as we possibly can. Keeping in mind that it's probably going to be an oversized case, it's going to be looser in there, so it's probably going to give us a reading that's off by two or three thousandths, but two or three thousandths is typically close enough for me. We're going to take our gauge, we're holding it tight into our chamber, we're going to loosen our rear screw, we're going to push our thing up with a, a and you know, we can argue how much resistance is needed. Consistent is what's important. You want to be able to know where we're consistently getting that measurement. So we're going to take more than one. But essentially, we're going to push that bullet forward till we can feel it engage the lands. Hold it just so it doesn't move back out. Tighten that screw down. And then as long as we haven't stuck our bullet too far in there, or we can take a cleaning rod from the opposite end of the barrel, lock that out. And now we can see the length of the how far the projectile is actually out of the case to load a projectile to the lands and get our measurement. Very conveniently, we can also see if we take our thumb, we take our thumbnail and mark where it's going in the case, give ourselves an idea if we were to load it to the lands exactly how much of that projectile is actually going to be seated through the neck of the case. Our plastic insert hasn't moved, so we can take our measurement. Obviously, this is where our bullet comparator set is going to come into play. In this case, we have to make sure our anvil base has been removed. And then our overall length gauge, we're going to insert our projectile into our appropriately sized insert for 6.5 Creedmoor, and point, which is 0.264. We're going to obviously use our 526 insert and we're going to see that our measurement is 2.157 inch. So this is what would be commonly referred to as CBTO or cartridge base to ogive. If you're using a different case or another method, you could still do something similar. Like I said, there's other possibilities. Some people will actually take a fired case and then resize possibly only the neck and then take a Dremel tool and slit the neck insert the projectile in and out, and then take that measurement. You have to make sure that it stays straight so the projectile doesn't move because you're in that instance, you're requiring the neck tension to hold the bullet in place. With this particular tool, that's holding that projectile in there. Either way, I think is going to give you a measurement that's probably close enough because what we really want to know is that that CBTO, that's what we know is going to be a distance to the lands. Now, hopefully this is where it'll be obvious to some people that haven't caught on yet why this might be important. If you guys are using the reloading manuals and you look at the actual cartridge overall length that it recommends for reloading, pretty much all the loads are going to tell you, including for this 147 grain ELDM by Hornady, which is the projectile that we're utilizing today for today's demonstration, it's going to tell you to load this at 2.800 inches. The cartridge overall length for that would put us somewhere on 2.947 inches. So if we loaded this at 2.800 inches, we're literally almost 150 thousandths from our lands. And every rifle is going to be different. Now this particular rifle has had somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,500 rounds through at this point. If you've ever heard the term chasing lands, this is another thing that you're gonna utilize this tool for. Because when you buy, if you buy your rifle brand new, this dimension, like it was on my rifle, was 40 thousandths less than that. But in this particular case, as we fire more rounds to the rifle, the throat is burnt out a little bit, and if we want to maintain our accuracy, we have to keep making the overall length a little bit longer to keep that projectile the same distance to the lands to maintain the accuracy in our rifle, which is something fairly easy to do with our particular tool. Another method that's similar to this is actually taking a resized case and a die and seating it deeper and deeper and painting the projectile with a Sharpie and seeing where you don't get lands marks on there, keep putting it in, cycling with your bolt and finding out what overall length you don't get that. That can be a very tedious process as well. And you again have to be able to extend it as we, what I would call chasing your lands as the throat gets extended in your rifle. 
Personally, I think that this is the one of the most important uses for this. And having all these tools available to us, it's very easy to take a new rifle, find out what those distance to the lands are. I don't want to get too distracted here, but mentioning the burger manual real quick, there's actually a test in the burger manual that recommends actually testing a load, basically loaded into the lands, 20,000s off the lands, and keep moving in different increments to see where you get the best groups. But the first step of doing that is knowing what the distance to your lands is by whatever measurement you do. This is the way I do it. It's fairly straightforward, and I think it's fairly repeatable. Like I said, if you guys want to try and make your own modified case, if you guys want to use another method, that's up to you. But having this bullet comparator set, having these tools makes it pretty easy, and they're not real expensive. And for reference, guys, if you're interested in picking these tools up, I'm going to put Amazon affiliate links in the description box below if you're interested in picking one of these up to help you find all these measurements out for your rifles. We're going to change camera angles one more time and go over another use that we have for this particular tool. So one of the very other important applications that we want to talk about today is actually during our seating process. Now, if you're recording the cartridge overall length, I'm not going to say that that's a bad value. Most people that do precision reloading like to repeat the length of their projectiles by the CBTO number that we just talked about earlier. Having this tool makes it really easy, especially if we have a micrometer gauge. Now, this particular micrometer gauge is by Hornady. You certainly don't have to utilize Hornady dies. There's other ones made by companies like Forrester and of course others. That's just what we're going to be using for our example today. For a budget minded person, Hornady is a very good option. Hornady's seating dies are universal and you can actually unscrew the micrometer part and you can convert any of your Hornady seating dies to micrometer dies. And this makes getting your bullet seating adjustment very, very easy, especially if you're doing an overall length test. You can just dial in 20 thousandths or 40 thousandths or whatever the distance between your groups are, and it's good to go. And unlike the Forester, you need to buy the micrometer for every particular caliber. You can you buy the micrometer for this once and whatever caliber you're loading. But I'm done with that commercial. One of the very things is assuming that you actually load different projectiles at different lengths, you who knows what your die setting is, you're gonna come out on a on a round and have your die setting backed off. You're gonna take a round that's not loaded. Now this one already has B, but you're gonna you're gonna put it in your thing. You're gonna seat your bullet. It's gonna be just started. You're gonna be able to take your tool and say very easy what the CBTO that you're going for is and dial it right into your die. So if we needed to, to move this 150 thousandths more, we're gonna dial in 150 thousandths, take our measurement. So it's very important when you don't have consistent tips like in hollow point bow tail, a lot of times you're gonna get inconsistencies in your overall length. Your CBTO should be consistent. You're gonna be able to dial that in really quick and be able to repeat it, especially when you take notes when you decided what the overall length you wanted to get to, the CBTO, you're just going to be able to, to get your next batch of bullets, dial that in, and have a very consistent distance to the lands, which you'll find out is what you really want. The consistent cartridge overall length isn't as important as making sure your distance to the lands from the ogive of the bullet is consistent. One thing that I think is very important to keep in mind with this tool is that Hornady is not going to guarantee that every single one of these is going to be the same. Though I'm sure that there is some repeatability from tool to tool, realize that this is a relative measurement that you're recording. You can't just take this measurement, take it to somebody else and say, I want this with their tools. Their tools could vary slightly. And because that diameter could be changing fairly rapidly on the projectile, you could be getting different lengths. It's where your tool contacts the projectile and how consistent that is. It's a very good number to record, but keep in mind it's relative to your tools on your bench. You're not going to be able to necessarily take anybody else's and you certainly need to know how far you're into the lands or, or away from the lands to make sure your reloading process is consistent. If you're reloading to the overall lengths that are stated in your reloading manuals, you're very likely giving up accuracy. Generically, a good place to start is somewhere around 20 to 30 thousandths off the lands, but you're just going to have to do the testing to find out what works in your rifle. So if you haven't been using this tool, I hope you found a couple of applications for what you'd use it for in your reloading bench. Guys, if there's something that you're using this tool for that I didn't cover, put in the comment section below, help everybody out. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any comments or questions, please put those in the comment section below. If you like the content, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon so you get notified when I post next week's video. I hope to see you back next week. And until then, stay safe in small groups.